Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In today's episode, we are checking out the latest experimental version of the Fly-By-Wire A320. And the reason why we're checking out is because they have completely reformatted, remodeled the EFB, the Electronic Flight Bag. And today, we're going to check it out. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, so obviously stepping into the cockpit, one of the great things about the fly-by-wire um, fly pad is that you do not have to power anything on to use it. So you just mouse over, we're gonna give it a quick click. And completely different, absolutely completely different. Now, before we get into things like the sim brief data, I wanna make sure that you guys um, know how to configure it and get it set up to the way you like. So let's go down to the settings cog and they've changed things around just a little bit, but still very, very easily uh, understood here. So we're gonna go to aircraft options and pin programs here. Your thrust reduction height, your acceleration height and your engine out acceleration. You can set the defaults in here. This is gonna be 1500 feet AGL, okay, is the most commonly used in the United States. States. Um, I don't know if it's different in any other nations or, and I imagine this probably varies by company as well. And it's also going to vary based on obstacles that might be around in the area. So for that, you'd probably have to check your departure charts and things like that uh, to really understand what the best one is for those. Your unit of measurements, whether you prefer kilograms or pounds, there's some real big catches there. Um, kilograms can be really helpful, even if you're flying in the US. And the reason why I state that is um, the takeoff calculators, right? To determining your flex temp, things like that. Um, everyone that I've ever ran into uses the kilograms to determine what the best flex temp is for the A320, which also we're gonna be talking about a different one in the guide next time because uh, I found out the one that I'm using is not so good. Um, but anyway, passenger signs, whether you want them to be no smoking or no, nor, no portable devices, goodness gracious talk. Um, your barrel unit, whether you want hectopascals or inches, um, I, um, isosymmetric altitude. I don't worry about that. And then your, um, radio st management panel, VHF spacing, uh, 25 kilohertz is the most common in the United States. I don't think 8.3 is used until you're overseas. So it really depends on where you're at. Um, as far as which one ones you'll choose. So you're going to set that up, get it to where you'd like. Then we're just going to go back. We can do the over here, or you can just hit the settings cog again to get you back to the same menus up to you. Sim options, again, default barometer unit, which one are you actually looking for? Um, sync Microsoft flight plan. If you create a flight plan in Microsoft flight simulator using the world, you can either save it or load it or don't uh, set it at all. It, it's based on, do you want the that flight plan to automatically be loaded into the MCDU you want to be saved or do you want no action to be taken at all? Um, so it really depends on how you're plotting it. The external MCDU server port. This is uh, for the web interface for using the MCDU. This is a fantastic tool. It is extremely quick. Um, very, very... Um uh, effective. I love this thing. And so this is the port that it's going to use. And you can change that if you have specific network settings or, or, or network requirements in which that port needs to be changed. Um, so that's it. And chances are, if you need to change this, you know who you are and you're already going to know how to do so. Um, so that's where you would change it in the configuration. And then the MCDU server connection uh, will terminate after five minutes, whether you want that to be um, off so this, it won't happen at all. It'll just stay active. Auto means that after five minutes, it will automatically terminate the connection to the MCDU. Okay, and let's see here. If dormant, I should say. Dynamic registration decal. This is um, if you have um, liveries that already have included uh, tail registration numbers on them. This is, you would want to turn this um, on and that will allow the uh, tail registration to be changed according to the livery that's being used. Um, your throttle detents, this is a big one for calibrating um, at what point your throttle goes to the particular settings. And this is actually really handy. We'll probably do a separate video on this because it actually takes a minute to do. Um, but uh, documentation supplied by Flybywire is actually really excellent on this as well. And I've done a video in the past on that as well. 
let's see here. And then the use calculate ILS signals. Um, I actually haven't dove into that. Um, not sure. I don't use it. So let's see here. Let's go down to, oh, I know what this is. Calculate ILS signals is the um, flyby wires system calculating the ILS glide slope and approach instead of using the Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, beacons that are, that are built into the program. Okay, let's go back to our settings real quick. We're going to go through our realism tab. Um, your ADRs, your IRS alignment, whether you want that to be instant, real, or fast. DMC self-test, same thing. And then the boarding time. The boarding time, I still like to do fast. I've been doing instant a lot and decided, eh, it's kind of boring. Um, it is fun to sort of hear everyone walking behind you, you know, as you're programming the aircraft. MCDU keyboard input, I turn this on. This is that functionality where if you click on the MCDU, you can then use your keyboard on your desk to type instead of using the MCDU pad. Um, I like to use it on occasion, so I leave that on. Um, you can do either or, so it's up to you. Um, let's see here, MCDU focus timeout. Okay, that's just the timeout on, on the uh, keyboard input. So if you turn the keyboard input on, let me just show you guys that real quick. I'm probably making more sense just to throw the batteries on. We're gonna move very quickly here. Come on, on down here. Okay, so if I clear this, right here, when that blue line appears, I can now use my keyboard to uh, control the input on the MCDU. Now, if I just click on the screen again, it goes away, and I can just use the keypad. So, you know, having it on doesn't hurt you. It's just an available feature. Now, what that timeout is, is if I click on this, after 60 seconds, this will automatically turn itself back off. Okay, that's what that was. Okay, um, and then separate tiller from rudder inputs. If you have a separate axis you wanna use for the nose wheel steering, instead of using your rudder pedals, you can click that. That's obviously gonna be more realistic. Uh, there's your nose wheel tiller right there, and you can see pedal disconnect there. Uh, so I believe this has both options. And then cockpit mode, that's if you are building a simulator cockpit. You probably, again, already know about this because you would've had to dive in pretty deep for that. And then your data link transmission time. Data link is a functionality that's available in the MCDU. Again, if you use it, you probably know it. Uh, we'll be doing uh, things about that later on. And then auto filling the checklist as things are complete. Again, unrealistic. So let's go back to our settings. ATSU, this is probably going to be one of the bigger ones. Your ATIS source, MEDAR source, and TAF source. Obviously, the associated program will determine where it gets its information from. And again, this is using things like the uh, dashboard panel here. If we have our weather information populated, which you'll see later, um, as well as uh, the requesting of information from the MCDU, such as the ATIS, and you can use a little printer function there in the back. Uh, whether or not you have your telex on the next one is the sim brief user this is probably the biggest one here that i wanted you guys to see you can enter either in your pilot id or for example mine would be overkill productions as my username i could type that in there and it would sync it um, automatically import sim brief data you can turn that on to where as soon as you turn the uh, flight pad on it's automatically going to load up your most recent flight I don't do that simply because obviously I make a lot of flights with the TBM and things like that and other aircraft where I use SimBrief pretty frequently. So I want to make sure that when I load it, because it's going to load whatever the last flight plan that you used in SimBrief was. Um, so it may not always be associated to the A320 if you didn't create it that same day. Um, and then the Hoppy user ID, that's for the A cars. That's a whole different thing. Um, we'll be discussing at a later time. And then error reporting. If you want to send error report logs over to FlybyWire. Obviously, your audio controls. Oh, SimBrief pilot ID. I thought it said it has been invalidated. I'm like, what? Okay. Anyway, uh, these are all your audio controls for the aircraft. You guys obviously can determine what the best volumes for you are. PTU, again, audible in the uh, cockpit. Unrealistic. I think they can hear that. Um, let's see here. And then do, 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 do. going down to the fly pad, you have all your brightness settings, time settings, themes. Now I do like this. You have a dark mode, a light mode, and then the standard blue mode. I actually kind of like that dark mode. I think I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, automatically show on screen keyboard. If it has a keyboard entry that's necessary, you can do that. And obviously you guys can walk through and colorize these as, or set the colorize, set these up as you would prefer. Okay, so that's just it for the settings area, and then obviously you have the current build version, which actually I think this is kind of cool. So Flypad OS 3, look at that. Now let's move into some of the cooler stuff. This is where this really actually gets fun. So import of SimBrief, 
I was very happy to see how fast that happens now. Um, you've got your scheduled flight time based on the SimBrief uh, time creation that can be edited in SimBrief as far as your departure and arrival times. Um, you have your entire flight plan here set up. You have your route listed down below. You have your MEDAR information. Now, you can, I like it set on RAW. Um, this is not RAW. This is... Um, you know what you're seeing here if you turn raw this is the, this is the raw data and this is what i like and i even like that they've sort of uh highlighted the more necess uh necessary information here so a lot of this other stuff is isn't something that you necessarily looking for when we're trying to get our meter information so, for example, here, this is the time that the METAR information was pulled. You have your wind 070 at 4 knots, visibility 10, skies are clear, temperature 28 degrees Celsius, dew point 14, altimeter 2907. When it comes to configuring everything in the cockpit, that's all the information we need. We don't even necessarily need the time. We will need the wind speed. Visibility is good to know as a pilot, um, but you'll need the temperature uh, definitely to enter into the MCDU for takeoff performance. And then um, obviously we'll need the, um, actually, I guess we wouldn't need that for takeoff performance, but we would definitely need it for um, the altimeter and actually backing up. Of course, you're going to need that. If you're going to need that takeoff performance, if you're using flex, um, anyway, and then coming down here, this is where things start to get cool. But you know what? Yeah, let's go to pin chart. So let's, let's start here. Well, well, here, we'll start here under the failure page. If you go to maintenance, you can select the different failures and uh, just keep in mind of the notation here. Um, you can select what failures you'd like to happen at some point during the flight. So that part's kind of cool. Going back to, I don't really use the failures page yet much, but I do use this. The pinned charts. Pinned charts kind of cool. Now, notice that you have local files. Okay, now we'll be talking about that. That is a folder that is inside the directory of the FlybyWire A32NX where you can actually pin um, or uh, save PDF uh, documents into. But I like to use the obviously the Navigraph configuration. Now, you click on the Navigraph tab. If you do not have your Navigraph subscription linked, it will prompt you for it. It'll give you a QR scanner code if you want, uh, where you can just use on your cell phone to authorize the uh, integration with the FlybyWire A320, or it'll also give you a web browser that you can type in and go to, um, you know, to complete the configuration. So mine's already been configured, obviously, but this is really awesome. So we're currently in Tucson. And it does take a second. So if we're doing, for example, let's say we want the taxi information, right? We can grab that. Boom. Look at that. Very, very nice. I really like this. Very, very handy. You can go to a full screen mode if you choose. We can go to a light or a dark mode. You can rotate the document. Depending on what you want to do. It gives us our aircraft location. And we can zoom in and out on that. There's our plane right there, right before Alpha 10. And what's another cool thing is you can pin it. So we can actually pin the chart. Now, the pin charts, at, when I first looked at it, kind of was one of those things um, that uh, at first I was like, well, it doesn't really make much sense because it's got so much work. But I understand because as you continue to fly, you know, it's going to get, obviously, that list is going to grow. So, but you can go to pin charts here. Okay. And again, you have to change your local files. So we're going to go Navigraph, or you can set it to all. But in our case, then, which charts do we have pinned? We're going to go Taxi. There it is. You can select it from here. So I probably won't use the pin charts much. Like, I really won't. Um, for me, it's more of a, you know, why? Um, but you can also do a search, which is cool. Um, but uh, I totally can see where some people would use this. It's just me. I, I think it's honestly kind of just as fast just to... Um, you know, <laughs> move around and, and navigate. I think both are just as quick, so it really doesn't matter. The local files, I could see where that would be pretty cool. And I'm going to test a few things out with that, but uh, I won't show that just yet. So anyway, that is the Navigraph charts section, which I think is just too freaking cool. And that was, again, quick access to the dashboard, which is brings us down here. The other thing that's really neat is you can customize the order of these. So if you wanted, for example, let's move the pin charts above maintenance, okay? Turn the edit off, and now I've got my weather information go directly down to my pin charts. So it works out really nice. Now, I don't know why it says no pin charts, because I totally just did. So that one's kind of weird, but that's all right. 
Um, and remember, this is the experimental version. That's the other thing. Please keep in mind. This is the experimental version. Okay, this is not even the development version. So, an experimental phase, but really cool. Overview uh, from the clipboard. You have the overview, which shows all the maximum ranges for the aircraft, uh, whether it be weights, range, model number, type of engines that are in it. And so from here, we can go to OFP, Operational Flight Plan, and there's our flight plan that we created in SimBrief. Uh, again, this is flying out to uh, LAX. Your ground equipment, you can see this has been completely redone. You now have pushback services, fuel services, so our fuel will be all handled from here now. Most of the principles are the same. The layout has just changed, but you still you know, determine what you want your fuel time to be. Um, you, know, you can call the fuel truck and all that good jazz, um, and I'll show you guys that in just a second. So if we go to services... We can connect the jetway. The door will open once the jetway connects. We can call a fuel truck. Now that I did that in a moment here, we're going to get a prompt on the screen, so be ready for that. Um, but then we could set our fuel load, determine what our, our fuel is going to be, and decide, and decide how we want it distributed, and then hit our play button. So pretty awesome stuff. And then obviously you have access to everything else, the baggage truck, the catering truck, etc. Then going over to your calculators, these should all look familiar from the previous uh, EFB version, descent and, uh, or uh, yeah, top of descent and landing. However, we have another really big surprise in the experimental version we'll be talking about in the next video. So, um, but uh, these are the same from previous. The Navigraph subscription we just checked and looked at. Uh, air traffic control, IVAO, this is for you VATSIM users or people who are using the Hoppy A cars. Um, again, that's pretty much the same, just looks a little bit different. The failures, we saw that before in the settings. Your checklist, now these are very uh, high level checklists, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, they're not gonna walk you through the necessary, the, the startup of the aircraft, um, but it does make things a bit easier. Um, it's show your last minutes uh, check, check is what these are. And then finally, again, you have presets. This is pretty nice, whether it be lighting. So let's see here if we wanna do a load preset. Oops, sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> Let's go to aircraft for a second. We can select the um, current status of the aircraft. But let me show you something with lighting. Let's actually walk through and real quick because this is pretty cool. This is actually probably one of the things that I hate doing the most. So it actually did load one. Uh, I like to set my brightness. It looks like it actually already did. It already did create one. So that's kind of neat. I'm seeing if they're all the same or different. Okay, so let's let's dim some things down here. I think those are our floodlights. Yep, they're on. So I rarely use that. I rarely use the flood panels. I don't do a lot of night flying, but I do do that. Oh, that was already set. Ah! Set that, the backlighting on this one, a little bright for me. I don't normally use it, like I said. Let's see what overhead looks like. The overhead panel, I don't really mind, but again, I don't really need it, so I'm not gonna set that. Um, and then the dim light on the, or was that already set to dim? It was already set to dim, okay. Yep, okay, so I do wanna leave it on dim. But that's how I typically like to set up my lighting see if it affects the MCDU. I do like to brighten those up just a bit. That's normally pretty good. So let's do save preset. And so now if I go here, boom, go here. Nice. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's a very nice feature. And then same thing with like we talked about with the aircraft configuration, whether or not you want to jump right into something. So let's go like ready for pushback. There's our fuel prompt indicating that the fuel truck has come outside. So it's not instant, but what I do like is that it's walking us through everything, so that's kind of nice. And we are ready to go. That's pretty awesome. Obviously, we still need to enter in our flight plan and all that good jazz, but, you know, still, everything except for MCDU configuration is now complete. So if you want to jump in, do a quick flight, flip that switch on, program your MCDU, and you're on your way. So that is kind of nice. I have to agree. I like that a lot. All right.
And that is it for the uh, Fly-By-Wire Flypad OS 3. I am super excited about this. I think it's an absolutely awesome job. I'm really grateful for the Fly-By-Wire team and all they do for us. It just This is just another great example of how this aircraft just continues to grow and grow. Um, and uh, like, like I said, we have another very major surprise, so be looking out for another video today on the Fly-By-Wire A320. I'll see you guys in just a bit.